मॉड्यूल 16 मास्टर्स ऑफ इंक पेंटिंग आई डॉक्टर रीता प्रताप फॉर्मर हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ड्राइंग एंड पेंटिंग यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ राजस्थान वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट जैपनीज पेंटर्स इन द न्यू इंक टेक्निक सुई बोकु गा वॉज मोकवान जो एत्सु तानशु शोबुन शेशु टोयो सोयन एंड टॉनशन शेशन शुकाय एंड सोटन व अदर ग्रेट जैपनीज मास्टर हु वर्क इन जैपनीज इंक टेक्निक सुई बोकु गा एंड Hatsu Boku splashed ink painted and created beautiful landscapes one of the first japanese painters in the new ink techniques sui boku ga was mokuan who went to china in the mid 14th century and settled in the monastery near hangzhou he modeled his style so closely on that of muchi to the extent even of using his seals that their works are often hard to tell apart mokuan and other japanese pioneers in ink painting confirmed themselves mainly to zen subjects but early in the 15th century the range was extended to include landscapes in the style of the southern song academy another artist of great importance is josetsu teacher of tenshu shuban active about 1400 of whose mark only one is left as widely accepted painting titled catching a catfish with a god it is a hanging scroll ink and slide colors on paper and at present in the collection of taizo in of mayo shinji kyoto japan this hand scroll illustrates the fisherman standing on the shore of a little stream opposite a clump of bamboo holding his god while from the stream a catfish observed the absurd and futile figure in the distance is bare outline of a mountain and above the painting are 31 poems by zen priests one of whom notes in his preface that This picture was painted as a screen for the shogun about 1413. Josetsu was according to the tradition the real founder of the monochrome ink painting. His pupil was Tensho Shubun. Complete mastery of the Sui Boku Gai was achieved by Tensho Shubun who flourished from 1423 to 1458. He was a painter sculptor and administrator of the shokuku ji in kyoto in 1423 shubun accompanied a buddhist mission to korea as director of the painting office he was the first officially recognized practitioner of the new chinese style he was indeed a fortunate choice for the post for the precision and refinement of his brushwork and the breadth of his vision set a standard that all his followers in ink painting strove to emulate he developed the current monastic mind landscape style he retained southern shung elements which enhance the sense of expanding space houses and boat sunk deeply among trees and reeds miss which separate planes reduced figures walking hunched over and thus archaized the chinese models then becoming available just as bompo transformed the orchid so shuban tried just as bompo transformed the orchid so shuban turned the increasingly solid forms and closed space of yuan and ming works in the hisha kui tradition into evocative almost transparent forms embracing a fluid space that appears to breathe and expand in the mist no certain work from his hand survives but the very sensitive landscape reading in a hermitage in bamboo grove 
has always been attributed to him and is very close to his style. The scholar monk looks out from his thatched hermitage onto the real subject of the painting. Poetic, space, time, here unfold by languorous pines and on the other side of the lake by the outjetting banks and ring of misty mountains. His other painting, Story of the Three Worthies, is a detail of a hanging scroll dated to 15th century and at present in the Sikiado Foundation, Tokyo. It is also a good example. Sheshu Toyo flourished from 1420 to 1506. A student of Tensho Shubun, but customarily been ranked higher than Shubun. And the number of his known works compared with the master is considerable. Some 35 works can still, to some degree of certainty, be attributed to Sheshu. He is also known as the greatest master of Japanese ink landscape. The name Sheshu must have derived his most commonly used name from two teachers, Josetsu and Shubun. Having studied Zen painting at the Shokokuji in Kyoto under Shubun, he founded the, he founded the Ankokuan studio at the southern western tip of Japan's main island close to Chinese trade route. From 1467 to 1469, he accompanied a trade mission to China. There he came in contact with painters of the Qi school, followers of Tai Chin, who had put new life into the ink painting of the Southern Shung academic tradition. Shi Shu paid a visit to Peking, where he was greatly honored. He also painted a mural sketching the courtyard side and directly experiencing Ming academic painting. From Ming bird and flower composition, he acquired the power to design on large scale that he later turned to effective use in his screen painting. This exposure to the massiveness, solidity, and relatively, this exposure to the massiveness, solidity, and relative self-sufficiency of Chinese painting in situ profoundly altered Seishu's own vision. On his return to Japan in 1469, Seishu went first to Kyushu, then after three years of traveling through Japan, he settled down in his own temple, the Onkokuan, in southern Honshu, where he remained until his death. Shishu's influence spread rapidly among his fellow painters and very soon he had acquired an enormous reputation. By the age of 40, he was entitled to sign his own painting. For unlike Shubun, who continued to paint in Chinese manner all his life, Shishu had by this time totally absorbed the technique and principles of the Su. Sui Boku Ga and had succeeded in transforming it by the sheer power of his artistic personality into a Japanese style. He was also an accomplished exponent of the Sur Hatsa Buko that is splashed ink painting style and of portraiture in the Zen manner and also a master calligrapher. In a few landscapes painted at the end of his life, the most famous and often reproduced example is the one painted in 1495. Hatsubuko landscape, Josui Soen, his disciple, it is a section of a hanging scroll, ink on two joint sheets of paper, and at present in the Tokyo National Museum. Its sharpness and dramatic tonal contrast belie the artist inscription. My eyes are misty and my spirit exhausted. The landscape of full brush and rapid strokes is of peaked mountains 
in the hazy distance as seen from a low angle. A vegetated hilltop and a house at the foot and two men in a boat can be made out through the misty atmosphere. Sheshu was 76 years of age when he did it and he gave it to his pupil seen as a recognition of the later's enlightenment. Sheshu's greatest achievement of sustained composition and most famous of all landscapes is the so-called long landscape scroll. Dated 1486, it is a section of a hand scroll, ink and slight color on paper and in the Mori Art Museum, Yamaguchi. It measures 18 meters and belonging to the Mori Daimo family for many generations. She executed in 1486 at the age of 67. According to his signature and note at the end, the scroll depicts a series of Chinese scenes through four seasons, a landscape in transition through the seasons from spring to winter. The change are imperceptible, yet one may see the fresh vegetation, yet one may see the fresh vegetation and more exposed rocks of spring. The richer growth, soft mist, water and great horizontal distance and open windows of summer. The leisure hours after the harvest in the fall and alongside the running theme of a Chinese city wall, the cool treeless snowy mountains and finally the closed windows in the winter. Here Sheshu included an occasional touch of color for seasonal effects. There are only two surviving paintings from a set of four seasons now in Tokyo National Museum. Detail of a long scroll depicting the four seasons. In the winter landscape, the hard angularity of the line and the cold bleak tones of the ink are highly evocative of the sober mood of winter in all Japanese characteristics. Sheshu also painted a few paired six-fold screens. One of the finest flower and birds. It is ink and slight color on paper, Japan and of Muromachi period and at present in the Kosaku Zenterio collection, Tokyo. This painting illustrates the decorative development of monochrome painting at this time. Slight touches of red and green while decorative also contribute to the life like quality of the birds and foliage. But certainly the placement of the elements of the composition, pine branch, pine trunk, reeds, rocks, flowers and cranes is extremely arbitrary. Almost as if the artist has selected these motifs and then disposed them onto the surface of the screen for maximum decorative effect. It is not yet an extreme decorative style, but motifs derived from China are here adapted to a different and Japanese taste. Sheshu painted as did most of his colleagues, the Chinese landscape in Chinese style. Nevertheless, there are certain rare works by Muromachi masters in which monochrome ink is used to represent Japanese scenery. Another painting, the Pro Monetary of Ameno Hashidate, dated to 1420 to 1506 and at present in the National Museum, Tokyo. This painting shows the final achievement of Sheshu. Amano no Hashidate is the famous scene on Japan's sea coast. A long spit of land is painted on more than 30 sheets of paper patched together. They measure 69 by 35 inches. His landscape, Amano no Hashidate, the bridge of heaven. Detail 
1502 to 1506 hanging scroll ink and light colors on paper and at present in the Japan Kyoto National Museum along the coast of Japan see northwest of Kyoto a sandy spit of land reaches across the mouth of the bay ranks of pine trees march along the peninsula to the very end of the point the scene is represented again and again in later japanese art and is one of the great pilgrimage sites for travelers japanese of foreign <coughs> the scene is represented again and again in later japanese art and is one of the greatest pilgrimage sites for travelers japanese or foreign shishu represents it in a cold blue ink typical of his later work with just touches of pale orange red giving some warmth to a few temple structure here shishu's unusual rigorous realism produces one of the most interesting of shishu's landscape besides ama ama no hashidet shishu traveled widely in honshu kyushu and maintained a studio in kyushu and one in yama guchi prefecture besides creating these paintings he sketched the countryside in china buildings such as temples are labeled and date the paintings to after 1501 which are within the very last years of his life shishu's legacy flourished in various styles his favorite pupil at the un kokuan was soen who flourished from 1498 to 1500 he received the master's famous habuku splattered ink landscape as a certificate of his proficiency in the style in soen's own habuku landscape ink on paper late 15th century or early 16th century the handling of brushwork and ink is far closer to shishu than to shobun or the original southern song master yu jijan a more poetic than shishu's work the organization of space is nevertheless conditioned by the mass and motion the mist engirdled the mist engirdled central range twists into the picture plane in an s curve while an arrow straight boats head for the center from the left and a firm plank bridge brings in potential motion from the right all forces converge at the central foreground in a dynamic thrust of jet black strokes this is in direct opposition to the dispersing nature of shobun school works another follow of shishu is toshun who flourished from 1506 to 1542 echoes the master's sense of turbulence in splattered ink version of yuji jan views on chio and chiang toshun work is closer to shishu's in both brush technique and expression his one of the eight painted hanging scrolls evening snow from eight views of the chio and chiang ink on paper early 16th century shows the white snow mountain on the left while a waterfall flows from a crevice over a snow covered rocks the wintry gale is blowing snow towards the mountain across across a darkening sky another hanging scroll softer and simpler by shishu's pupil shu getu u tokan who flourished from 1440 to 1529 is hatsuboko landscape ink on paper and at present in the clavelin museum of art here the variation of wash is delicately controlled that the tones are minutely calculated so that each wash occupies the imaginary space provided for it that a foreground rock does come forward that a distant building and its surrounding shrubby recede still ultimate knowledge of the picture remains beyond our grasp 
In comparison to other later works in the splashed ink style, these have a wide range of tone. Such work can be a silent dialogue between a great artist and the materials, brush, ink and paper, that he knew best and on their own terms. His most famous work is probably one of his smallest, an album painting of a fishing boat in a storm hurrying to the shelter of the shore. It is dated 16th century, ink and color on paper, and at present in Kyoto, Japan. Perhaps 12 inches wide past a point land with a suede backed hut and a wind blown tree, one looks out to a strong sea and a small boat running landward before the wind. In the waves in the right foreground, in the type of brush stroke used to represent the wind blown tree or the curve and bend of the bamboo above the hut, one sees an elegant and refined decoration quality within a masterful shin style. From a six panel folding scheme is a tiger. It is also 16th century painting at present in the Cleveland Museum, Ohio. This painting shows his command on a variety of ink subjects and styles. All this proves that Session in this remote area had spent his life studying ink paintings by Chinese and Japanese masters and by this time their works were widely copied and circulated and constitutes yet another instance of the speed with which new ideas and artistic styles gained currency in Japan. Kenko Shoki was active from 1478 to 1506, also called Kei Shoki, was the painter monk. He was, the, he was a painter monk of Kenchoji Kamakura. His paintings emphasize the uncharacteristically sharp brushwork. Shoki's masterpiece, Spring Landscape, is a hanging scroll, ink and slight color on paper, and at present in the Nezu Art Museum, Tokyo. It represents a grotesque hollowed out cliff with a small hut between its jaws, while beyond is a simplified view of mountain ranges and pines. Here is even more arbitrary brushwork. Here is even more arbitrary brushwork and composition than that of Sheshu. The rhythms of the rock, the twisting branches of the pine trees and the gradation of the washes seem more calculated even if brilliantly handled. Other painters who like Sheshu were deeply influenced by Shobun, included Bunsai, Jasuku and Soten, all active in Kyoto during the middle and later years of 15th century. Jasoku and Bunsai were famous chiefly for the portraits of Zen priest, as for example, the latest magnificent portrait of Yuima Koji. It is a hanging scroll dated to 1457 and at present in the collection of Osaka, Japan. In an inscription on the upper half of the picture, the abbot Nanzenji, the abbot, in an inscription on the upper half of the picture, the abbot of Nanzenji explains that a Zen priest on converting his father's house into a monastery commissioned from its main devotional image, the portrait of his father as Yuima Vimalkirti, the scholarly disciple of Shakyamuni. It is remarkable not only for its realization of intense spiritual and intellectual force, but also for the masterly way in which Bunsai had blended the two quite different brush techniques. A nervous calligraphic line in the drawing of the ropes and a cool precision in the rendering of facial details. One generation earlier than Sheshu was Soten or Oguri Tsukeshiji, who was active from 1398 to 1464, a feudal lord who when faced with defeat, escaped and entered the Shokoji. As evidence of how 
this ink painting style came to be regarded he was appointed official painter for the military government around 1463 but no certain works from his hand have been identified 